So hello everyone, here we are starting week six of our uh, breakthrough course building system. Um, we're kind of at the end of this. Um, um, as I've been sharing with a lot of uh, the folks who are installing the sites, there's a lot that has to be done with that. But now we want to look kind of like come up for air and then what's next? What is it that, that this happens? So what I want to do in this class is kind of go back and look at the context of what it is that we've built. Uh, let's look at the offer page that we've built using the marketing research and how do these come together with both the course on the fulfillment site, but then upstream, how do we sell from it? So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen. So, um, no, nope, wrong page. Let me start at the beginning. So here we are at the beginning. So, um, so how do I go about launching this? So let's just kind of review what we've done. So we have addressed target audience fears, challenges, and frustrations. That was really the focus of the marketing research. So we really want to kind of look at what, what are those things that are really irking, confusing, frustrating um, this target audience of ours, and how do we really capture their language, their problem, what is it that keeps them up at night? And oftentimes what keeps them up at night is very different from where our focus is as experts in our field. Um, so we've been able to... Um, include your offer page has exactly what your online course contains because if people go to your course and then they're kind of wondering what is it that I'm getting you know are we meeting are we not meeting if there's any ambiguity uh, people are just gonna come up and say well you know I'll write him an email and see if he answers us so you, you really want to make sure that Everything that is included in the class is in there. You want to make sure your offer describes the results your students will receive. So not only what makes up the course, but what's the end goal. And the end goal should not be, I learned something. It should be, I accomplished something. I, you know, I did something so that it's measurable, you know. If I came up and I'm trying to learn guitar, um, learning to play chords is probably not the thing I want to say my course does. If it's that you'll be able to finish playing a specific song, that you'll have a complete understanding of you know, how to read music, whatever those things are, because people measure a course's match to what they need based on the results they're going to get, not, you know, on the learning path. So we talk about who's in your program and if optionally you can include who it's not for. And this, sometimes it's easier to describe who it's not for just for clarity's sake. Uh, and then we have a price and we have a guarantee. So I'm, I'm just going to pull over here the offer page from my uh, program. And, you know, I follow that same, you know, format, you know, and, and I built this slide off of, you know, what's in here and what's in the template that I've shared with you. So, you know, do you want 100% automated sales? Do you fear overwhelming your audience with too much information? Do you want a technology, technology platform that's easy for you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this here is a, um, you know, a statement, you know, this, uh, this is the most effective instructor-led program. So we're trying to make a claim, and one of the things that I mentioned uh, when, when I was talking about this, I want to say it was week three, is your marketing establishes your credibility, okay? Your delivery either enhances that or diminishes it. So, um, you know, you can make whatever, you know, claim you want. You can make outlandish claims that then later when people go through your program, they're kind of going, well, it really fell short. Um, so uh, this is designed to sell people. 
Uh, but at the same time, it can't be, you know, it can't be mismatched with what you're delivering. So this is my description of what's included. Uh, this is the results. You're going to have your first 100% ready for sale, your course. Um, you're going to organize your expert knowledge. So, it, you know, this is results driven. Here's the who's it for, who's it not for. Um, the logistics I put in there, it is in the template I shared with you. So I just want to make sure that people know when you're meeting, price, and then the guarantee. Now, what isn't in here is um, testimonials because this is the first run of this, so I don't have them. Uh, Chris, what's up? You're, you're on mute. No, you're on mute, man. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to pick up on your point there about, uh, um, it's actually something I talk quite a bit about in my book, it's making a promise and delivering on that promise and make sure that the two align. Now, there's a lot of research that says that if you over-promise and under-deliver, it generates negative word of mouth. Sure. So you don't equally, you don't want to go and promise a little bit and way over deliver. Yeah, because then the, the, the attractiveness of taking the class diminishes, right? Yeah. So uh, what I always recommend is that you should deliver by no more than 10% on what you promise because people are welled. But then when you come to upsell them later, they're not expecting a load of stuff for nothing. So oh, right. It, the other thing too is that you, you also want to leave yourself room for the upsell. You yeah. Know, assume that there's something that comes next. They're far, you know, you've far exceeded their expectations, uh, but not so much that you sold, you know, you gave them for free something you could have sold them next. So yeah, yeah point well taken. Uh, if we think to the infusion soft sequence, um, it's the well, it's the well part of it. So if you deliver, just a little extra, go that extra mile to make them feel really, really good about themselves, the likelihood is you're going to generate word of mouth because they're on the positive side of the balance sheet. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, cool. So, so, so this is one of the things we have. I can get this thing to go to the next page. Okay, so we have the offer page. We have the site. So, uh, the site is set up so that you can sell, uh, you can fulfill the course, uh, you can have students log in, log out, so it's a usable platform and you have a dashboard. Um, so, you know, I'm just saying that that's the chassis. Remember in, in week four, I kind of divided up the different parts of the, the course technology just so that you can kind of frame it and now I can talk to you guys about this and have it make sense. We can have a really cool dashboard and no course behind it. So that, that's kind of, so you have a chassis, a platform to work with. And then, okay, so we have, am I skipping pages here? For some reason, this is not cooperating with me. Let me just fix this. Offer page site, okay. So we have your market research. Now, the market research provides you the input into your offer page. And we just went over what that page looks like. It tells us the course format preferences. So you've spoken to people, they've given you feedback. Some of you might have said, look, you know, what I really want was an in-person class. You know, if it's not in person, it's just not interesting to me. Other people, it's, you know, I, I remember doing a survey and somebody said, dude, don't give me video. I don't want video. I really want to be able to read it because I'm sitting here listening to someone and it's, you know, they're trying to hype sell stuff and over explaining and I'd like to be able to go all the way down to the bottom of the page and get to the meat of what I'm most interested in, which I thought was interesting feedback. Uh, so here was one person that didn't like a video. Um, in my case, it was a, a real outlier and it didn't really affect what I did, but you know, it's, it's part of the format. Uh, some people want a, you know, a course format like the one that I use here, which is a uh, done with you with it's kind of like a group slash coached format where I'm facilitating it with Facebook uh, support so the, the research tells you that it tells you about pricing um, Elizabeth um, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about this your concerns were you've got kind of scattered results coming back at you that's actually not bad um, I mean ideally they all kind of hone in and it's kind of like you need to charge you know 57.97 and you know exactly what to charge 
So you've got a couple of different results, but the whole point is you have results. And so now it's a matter of, okay, what do we do with them? So we are asking people for their pricing preferences. Um, we're, we're looking to get potential beta customers. First of all, we all like customers, but having a customer makes a huge step forward in building our confidence. And I'm not just saying your personal self-confidence, confidence that this course works. I mean, when, when I ran this course and in beta and I was able to get eight customers and I want to qualify that paying customers, it's kind of like, okay, at a price, and maybe it's not my ideal price, I can sell this. People will pull their wallet out and buy it. So, so it's a proof of concept for running your course, and we'll talk a little bit about what, you know, what we do there. But just as important, it confirms the research. It confirms that you know, I'm, I can sell this thing. It may take selling over the phone. It may take um, it, you know, in-person meetings. Um, so what that tells me is that the course has hit a nerve, there's an interest in it, but I have to work extra to fill in the gaps of knowledge. And we'll talk about exactly what that is. So now I, I can kind of say, okay, the course, the offer page is good. Now I've got to work on what's right ahead of that in order to make it so that I can sell it to cold traffic. So I'm confirming it based on, you know, warm, hotter traffic. I just don't know if this is going to sell for cold. So, so that's kind of what we're shooting for with the market research. So, okay, we have an initial course format. And, you know, I mentioned do it yourself versus done with you, um, you know, for other, there's community aspects to it. There's other parts of it. Uh, you have an initial course outline. Now notice, you can launch your course without having a single lesson available. If it's, if it's one like this one, for example, that we say it starts December 5th, and I was talking to you all in late November, so I didn't need to have the course available, okay? I just needed to know that I could have my course available by a specific date, in order to meet my commitment with folks. So um, you need the outline because, I mean, you have to have an idea of what the heck you're going to teach, but it doesn't have to be rock solid. Keep in mind, you're running a beta, and what you want to do is to get feedback from people, and you may adjust, um, you know, your plan, you know, as you go. Um, so, you know, it's sufficiently solid to run your beta program, and, um, and then you have the platform for running the test itself. So you have to come out of here assuming it's a test platform, and that's really the way you wanna position it. Um, and as a matter of fact, even if you were to run this class in, in a done for you format four or five times, the more you consider it a test so that it's a refinement process that gets better and better, the more suited you're going to be to seeing, okay, how do I one up it how do I provide more value? How do I maybe split it up so that I offer it with two different um, sections, maybe sold separately at different price points? Um, and then keep in mind, this is likely to be step one of your offerings. In my case, this is a great prep for someone who later wants to a full-blown build out of a course. And my team and I, we build courses. So it's a nice, initial step, I could see some people taking this course and saying, okay, I'm going to spend this and it's a great way for me to qualify, you know, George and his team as course builders. And then it's, it's, it's a, it ends up being in, from my perspective, almost like a trip wire-ish sort of thing, which is why we also talk that this helps you grow your practice if you're in the knowledge selling space or the, you know, the consulting space. So, that being where we are, what comes next? Okay, you want to run your program as a beta. Okay, and you kind of want to position it as a beta because the nice thing is if you sell someone on a beta, 
And like we were talking before, you exceed their expectations. They're kind of going, man, I jumped into a beta program and it was really good, good enough, hopefully to, to provide a very positive testimonial. Um, you've really validated an awful lot. Um, and then also you can get that sort of feedback, which, um, you know, a lot of us want so that we can come up and decide how to make adjustments to it and, and really push it forward. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important getting that social proof is, which is why you've heard me bugging you all uh, to get testimonials, because I really want people to come up assuming you guys think this was a very worthwhile course, that you would come back and describe exactly what was your experience, because one of the biggest um, things you're going to run into, uh, you know, none of us teach in a vacuum market. You know, it's rare that we are the first person that invented what I'm going to teach. So your course may be right on, your offer page may be right on, you know, the results are right on, but then people are coming up and going, man, you know, I, I really need to tackle this problem in my business. I need a resource. And now you've got to get into their head going, well, why them? Why that program? And so that's where your social proof uh, can give you a hand because someone who's really doing the analysis and looking across multiple solutions that they can use to take the next step, they're going to want to come up and say, well, look, this guy says that he, this was, his experience was very positive. This other person, and if you can get them where they're really describing the testimonial, you know, testimonial describes where they were and how this enabled them to overcome some issue they were trying to address, the better you are so that now in your marketing materials, um, you know, you're set up well. Um, I'm sure a number of you, if you've been to some of those conferences, you know, where someone is presenting um, some solution as part of um, an online course, as part of a mastermind program, you know, whatever it is that they're teaching, they'll come up and I've seen people come up and say, hey, Hey, Fred, can you come on up here? And they'll actually take, you know, a guy who's been in their mastermind program, you know, for three years. And the guy was, you know, he was a bum on the street begging for food. And now the guy, you know, he's basically in Mosquito Island with Russell Brunson. And it was all a result of my program. You know, I mean, that's kind of the extreme case. But you want, you want situations like that because what are people going to do? Some people are going to go, man, that's pretty good. I, I get it. A lot of people who are like in a disc profile and they're really like the bean counter types, they're going to want to go up to that person. Tell me a little bit more about your experience with this. How was it? So for a lot of people, um, that social proof is, is more than just, well, look, he's got a lot of social proof and it looks like he's using real names and he's actually got names of people and he's actually got like the city, state and country where they live. Um, it seems like it's legit. These are real testimonials. But for other people, it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to look them up on LinkedIn and I'm going to give them a call and see if these people really were in that program and if, if, if it was any good. I mean, other times you can just come up and ask, you know, the author of the program and ask them, hey, can you give me a couple of referrals? And by the way, I, I like what this guy said on here. Can I reach that person specifically as part of your vetting process? Um, again, it depends on your price point. If you're selling a $50 course, you know, people probably aren't going to investigate that hard. But if you're selling something a thousand to two thousand, people may want to spend a little bit more time doing the research. So that's what comes next. So then I've got well, what comes after that? So we have an offer page. The offer page focuses on what your course does. What's it priced at? What are the results, et cetera? It doesn't say anything about you. It's not a credibility builder. And I've done that on purpose because, I mean, we can only tackle one big problem at a time. The assumption I'm going with is that whoever is being sent to that offer page already learned what they needed beforehand about you so that their questions are answered about, well, why this guy? You know, what makes this guy so smart that he can actually produce a course that's that good? So it, when, I'm, when I was selling this course, you know, over the phone, via email, person to person, 
I already had a relationship with the folks that I was selling to. So I didn't really have to go there. Um, I have established myself in my field as a course building expert, you know, as a membership site expert. And I went after folks that were in my community of Infusionsoft types, speaker types. That's really my audience. So I didn't have to spend a lot of time coming up and saying, hey, um, let me tell you a little bit about us. Why don't you go to the homepage of my website and, and read about my practice? Because that's not who I intended to sell first. Matter of fact, one of the people that, um, that um, I, I was talking to about this course, he came up and he, he read over my offer page. He was actually one of the people that I did my market research with. And he says, George, I met you in person. You are clearly an expert in your field. The offer page doesn't match that expertise. And that was really interesting because he knew me. He read the thing and he says, dude, do something. But, you know, I, I just don't see that the offer expresses that, you know, that confidence that I had in you when I met you. So that was actually really great feedback for me. So, so what has to happen before? So again, since I was selling over the phone and in person, you can assume a lot about the relationship and their familiarity with, with you. And clearly the offer page is intended for warm or even hot traffic. Some of the folks that have taken this course are existing customers of ours. So I didn't have to sell them on me. They'd already pulled out their wallet and done business with me. Um, so it was now a matter of, do I need this thing? Explain to me what it is. It's an education process. It's not, let me, let me tell you why you want to do business with us versus this other person. So, man, I'm changing pages. It's just not working. And I don't want to go full screen because it was, wasn't behaving right earlier. So here's what we need to do. How do you target cold traffic to buy? Because eventually what, you know, we all want, I mean, you know, one of our goals can be, how do I put up an ad on Facebook to people in a specific demographic that seem to be in the demographic that would be interested in buying from us? And then how do I get those people from where they are, you know, starting point to where I want them to be, which is ka my, um, my shopping cart. And so, so the thing you need to then cross is establish yourself as the, an expert. And my assumption going into this, and this was in my who this course is for, someone who's already selling in the space that you're trying to build the course in. So, you know, at the very beginning, I asked you, what are your res what are your assets? Who are the people that know you? You know, it's almost like, how big is your Facebook list? Do you have any Facebook groups? How big is your LinkedIn following? How big is your email list? You know, what is your asset and what credibility do you already have? Because that's your biggest asset moving into this course space. So, you know, if you're starting to establish yourself as the expert, I mean, that's not the worst thing that can happen, but that is a precursor. So you want to leverage your existing expertise. You want to leverage that tribe of followers if you have them, and this should be of followers, and you should leverage what already works for you. For example, in, in my case, I do a lot of blogging. There's a ton of content that's out there. I get a lot of SEO to my site of people doing searches like Infusionsoft membership sites, um, uh, Infusionsoft online courses. Uh, there are keywords that already come to me. So can I put some sort of a banner, an ad, something that someone doing a search like that is going to see and say, huh, maybe I ought to consider reading this thing that this guy's offering. So again, we all have our assets. We all have, you know, areas where we're strong. For example, um, I, I know some folks who are very tight in a circle of, let's say, women entrepreneurs. And so there are a lot of women entrepreneurs 
Yeah, and Sue, you're kind of peeking up here. Um, you know, there's a circle of people who know you and wouldn't know me from Adam, right? And so, you know, who is that circle that you have? There are some people that can very easily get on a stage because let's say they're very involved in the Rotarians or they're very involved in, in some sort of a, a group where they've already established themselves as an expert that other people will look up to in the general area that they serve. So how do you tap into that as your first, you know, potential um, customers for an online course that's related to what you already do? So what are the options? And what I want to do then is go over potential options. Now, I'd love to tell you this is a piece of cake you know, sign up for my next course and then boom, 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 we walk you through there and before you know it, you're selling like hotcakes. Um, if it was that easy, um, you know, it, it's not all that easy. Um, but it's very doable. There are methodical ways for taking step-by-steps -step and doing this. Now, this, this is kind of a traditional approach. You know, if you, if you ever read anything from Digital Marketer, you know, the F Frank Kearns, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, you offer, a, you know, you put up a paid ad offering something for free. You upsell them to a tripwire, something that's inexpensive, something that people don't have to think that hard about. And then finally, you come up and you, um, you know, you sell them on the offer and you experiment to find the combination that works best at getting people from not knowing you at all to buying your course. This, as a matter of fact, um, in, in one of my, I, I've written a couple blogs on this. For people who already have an established business and are already selling in this space, this is probably not the next best step because uh, when you start thinking about what you have to spend to get the traffic off of, you know, either Facebook or Google ads or, you know, whatever, um, if you're selling a low priced offer, it's hard to justify the amount of either talent you have to hire or ad pay that you have to spend in order to get the traffic. So if you're selling something and then you're selling the next thing for, you know, you've, you've seen people that offer things for $7, 17, 27, you know, it's kind of like the, let me make them a customer. And then they buy this thing that, you know, is going to impress them about who I am. And now I sell them on the, you know, more expensive consulting. Uh, engagement or you know whatever else is that you want to send them this is not one that I recommend but I started with this one because this is just common for people that are in this online uh, marketing space people that um, you know are used to building sales funnels uh, again I'm not saying don't do it I'm just saying um, this one doesn't leverage the best assets that you have now a sales funnel offering free valuable content so uh, you may have seen these. Uh, matter of fact, the first of these that I saw was years ago. Um, oh, um, what is it? The Jermaine Griggs, who uh, was one of the ultimate marketers back in, I think it was like 2011, uh, for Infusionsoft. This guy was a master at this kind of thing. And he, I remember he targeted me, because I'm an Infusionsoft user, a course for leveraging the kind of things that he did in his marketing. And what did he do? He sent me three videos over like a week's time. And each video was about 45 minutes to an hour long teaching some really sharp stuff about, you know, how to market yourself. And he was, he was doing all sorts of these like ninja samurai warrior tricks to, um, you know, how do you, he was basically figuring out lead scoring before Infusionsoft even had lead scoring built into their tool. And when I was, I, I, you know, the way I saw them is I was on a trip to Pensacola to go visit my daughter who was studying up there. And I was reading it. I was listening to it, you know, on my phone on the way, you know, so my cell phone price that month was a little higher. Um, but I listened almost like an audio book to his three videos. And I'm telling you, I can't, the only reason I didn't buy it is because it's kind of like, I'm not going to use this right now. 
But when it was done, he established himself in my head as the sharpest guy in the Infusionsoft marketing space. And as a matter of fact, you know, I developed a relationship. I've actually blogged uh, about him. And I'm not sure where he's gone, but Jermaine Briggs was a big name in the Infusionsoft space a while back. And, um, and it, it, but it was, he was giving away for free some serious, I mean, real knowledge. And then what he did, his, his upsell was, I'm going to show you tools that make all the stuff I taught you much easier to use. And oh, by the way, join my mastermind, which was like an ongoing, you know, recurring revenue. It wasn't that expensive. It was like a, I want to say like a three to $4,000 solution, which was very well priced for someone who needed it. And then if, if you saw, if you went to like the future icons for Infusionsoft, you'd see the, you know, the Jermaine Griggs tribe and they would go like to a special luncheon or something. Um, I'm sure there was more to it than just the lunch. Um, but so here you have a course and if you show three parts of the course or three precursors to your course that establish you as the expertise then your course is like the completed version of what it is that you're doing. Now you have something that establishes you as that expert. They know why you, and then it's a logical next step into your course. Um, a lot of people, I mean, I didn't mention this here, but that's an ebook kind of plays a similar role. You come up um, and, and I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a, um, uh, a coach who I know through a customer who was speaking in town and um, so my customer says hey it's on me uh, I want you to meet my coach she's really good and uh, she's speaking at you know some someplace nearby so I went to the event and it's funny it's a NABO event National Organization of Women Owners and I'm kind of going I'm a guy he goes no no you're welcome you're coming and um, so the lady comes up and it's typical of a webinar, which I'm talking about. She describes her story. She tells her you about how you got into, how she got into the business, a struggle that she had. Uh, establish yourself as a credible speaker for sure, as an expert, as a coach, as an expert doing online marketing, and then you couldn't buy anything from her. The only thing you could get from her is her book or sign up for an event that she was doing in um, San Diego three months later. Now, at the time, I was looking for a coach and I bought her book and the book even came with like an app that helped you schedule your time and get more organized. And I go, you know, I read the book beginning to end. I go, this lady knows her stuff. Uh, this lady is worthy of me considering to become a coach. So I send her an email and I go, hey, can I, you know, can I talk to you? And she goes, sure, sure come up, I couldn't hire her. She wasn't selling herself as a coach. She wanted me to go to San Diego and go to her event. And then the event is where she was going to sell me. So, um, and, and by the way, she sold me. I was in her program for a year and it was, you know, it was an ongoing, um, you know, year long coaching program, mastermind kind of style. Um, but what do you do? You, you give that ebook to establish your credibility. Now the, the ebook's got to give some content. Otherwise, um, you know, people won't find it as valuable enough to, to say this person knows their stuff. So it's got to deliver something. Okay. But you have to think then what's next? Well, the next thing can be, you know, the offer page for your course. Now, I, if you think of this course, this course could be delivered, you know, I mean, be a little rough as a do it yourself ebook. It could also be delivered as a do-it-yourself course without me participating in it. And since I'm not participating in it, I really can't reduce the price and then use this as not so much a lead magnet, but as a tripwire for higher-end consulting services. I'm just kind of showing you different options. So uh, an ebook, a valuable content um, you know, offer, all are good options. Now, I mentioned this lady uh, doing a sales webinar, uh, a, a, an in-face presentation. Uh, a live webinar is exactly the same thing. I know people whose 
presentations on sale uh, on stage where they're selling and their live webinars use exactly the same script. Like there's no reason for them to be any different except that in this one, I get to see the person. Uh, the person on stage gets a very qualified audience, assuming they're presenting at the right place. Um, and a lot of times what happens is those people are on stage and they're in a partnership with the person that runs the program where the person that runs the program says, well, they're going to get their money's worth at the event attending that session. But if he sells anything, they're like the affiliate and they get some sort of a, you know, a commission from, from it. So if you look at these webinars, if you look at these stage presentations, they tend to follow a long sales copy format. You know, if you go back and you study uh, direct response marketing and back th the stuff that was invented back in the 70s when you'd get those, I mean, some of us are old enough, right? You know, where you'd get those, I, I want to say there were basically eight pages. It was two pages folded over and then you'd open it up and they'd tell you an eight page story and they were selling you on something. It could be anything from a mortgage. It could be insurance. Um, that format has been used over and over again in this online space and running a webinar or giving a presentation from stage takes that same approach. These, these presentations tend to be 45 minutes to 90 minutes. Um, if you can keep someone on for 90 minutes, there's definitely an interest. So now it's a matter of does your offer match that. So if you look at your offer page, the offer page is ideal for the end of a webinar or the end of a presentation from, from a stage presentation where you'll come up and say, by the way, anybody that's interested, go to this URL, you know, or if it's a webinar, it's kind of like just push the button, you know, underneath my, my image and you'll see the, and then you take them to the offer page, the offer page. And uh, let me just um, show, uh, somewhere in here, man, I'm just disoriented today with my screen. Okay. So this is my, this is my uh, offer page using, I mean, it matches the one I was just showing in word. So if you've just listened to me on stage and I tell you, you know, I'm talking about it. And by the way, my breakthrough course building system is really how you put this stuff into action. You know, clearly in a 90 minute presentation, I'm not going to be able to show you how to build, you know, a course on your own. So you send them to here so they can buy. Uh, Elizabeth, you had a question? I just want to be clear. So the sales page that we were working on is different from the offer page. So the sales page is sort of for the cold or warm traffic. And then the offer page is for warm traffic. Because the, the beginning of your offer page looks very similar to your sales page. So I'm wondering, is there a difference? W which sales page are you referring to? Uh, the one that you showed us earlier, you were talking about the sort of the sales page where we say, do you want this? Do you want that? This, this is what you're... Yes. No, these are exactly the same. Oh, they're the same. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, this is not a, this is not the breakthrough uh, sales page building system. So, yeah, okay. so really what I'm saying is if you get your webinar, your webinar is the precursor to this so that by the time they get here, they don't have to wonder who the guy in the picture is. They're just knowing that this is his course. I mean, I got to put something there. I might as well put my picture on it. Uh, you know, and then at the bottom, what's missing on mine is I don't have the, the um, testimonials. Matter of fact, I, I sent this page to be looked at by a couple people. It's like, man, George, this is pretty good. But by the way, where, where are the testimonials? It's like, well, I don't have any yet. That's why they're not there. Um, so, but, but you're asking the right question. It's, it's the sales page then would be really that story, you know, and, and you've read those sales pages where it's kind of like, you know, um, I mean, one that comes to mind is a guy that, you know, he, he had 30 days before he would get evicted from his apartment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his, he's from another country. He's an immigrant. He has no. And so he's basically counting down. And it was 17 days. And on the 17th day, he actually sold something that was enough to pay for his 
rent and a little bit for spending money for food and whatever. And then that's what got him, you know, so it, it's that story so that if you're, you know, you're building, first of all, rapport with people so they understand because people don't typically like to buy from the guy who's the king of the hill. If you're too far above me, that's almost like threatening or it's kind of like, well, of course this guy can sell courses. You know, he was born with a silver spoon in its mouth and, you know, he had daddy's money to throw at stuff or, you know, whatever. The guy made a kingdom, um, you know, because he was super successful selling cars and now he took all that money and now he's an expert building membership sites. Well, duh, I mean, anybody can do that, right? So I'm just saying, not that anybody could do that, but it's not as impressive. But if your story is, how did I get into this? And here's the struggles that I overcame so that people can go, man, I, I can relate to this guy. I, I get what that person went through. That's a lot like me. And people like to buy who people that are like them. I mean, that's just kind of the way it works. So your webinar... Um, you know, and, and again, if, if you if you read over direct response marketing and, um, you know, how to build an effective webinar, it establishes you as an expert. Uh, it provides teaching that's perceived as valuable. So it can't just be a pitch. It's got to be something when people are done, it's like, oh, you know, I didn't know that. That was pretty impressive. Or if I did know that, it was something that was presented so uniquely different or in a way that was impressive where it's kind of like, huh, this person has something to teach me. And then it leads to the call to action, which is to take, which is to get them to the offer page of your course. Y'all with me? Steve, I know you're, Steven, I know you're there um, kind of behind that image, um, but you don't have to say hi or anything. <laughs> Hey, George. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of moving around here with my laptop. No, no, no problem. No problem. So I don't want to, I don't want to get people dizzy with them with the laptop moving around. I'm sorry, did you ask a question? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm just giving you a hard time because I, I, I needed to. You, oh. You're the only other Miami person on the, on the line here. Okay, so we have, yeah, there you go. It's all about the you, right? Uh, okay, so Giving a live presentation, like I mentioned before, is very similar to giving, uh, you know, on stage. So um, the, the techniques, matter of fact, I, I've listened to people who I know present in person and I've seen their webinar and it's like, oh my God, it's exactly the same, the same scripts. Now, once you've kind of got a live presentation, a lot of people go to an evergreen webinar and they're tools that are really good for taking a presentation and making it available online. You've probably seen those when, um, I mean, it's funny, the other day I was like, just, I was bored and it was like Saturday late and I had like some time to kill. And I went and I signed up and it's like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of good to see this video. Well, the video, oh, the webinar is, you know, the next showing is 15 minutes and it's like, you know, 9.30 on a Saturday. It's like, hello. Um, but, um, so it's it basically systems that are timed to either give you a presentation shortly or a presentation, you know, Monday at three o'clock, Tuesday at four o'clock. Uh, back in the day when people didn't know how those things works, a lot of people thought they were live. Um, you know, we, we give a presentation Monday, Tuesday, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern time or, you know, 1.30 Eastern time. And some people actually believed that the people were live and some, and the tools were actually so good they were technically believable, um, unless you're someone like me who starts doing, you know, I don't know, let me refresh the browser and see what happens and things like that. But, um, you know, they're built so that they're that good and they'll even simulate, you know, people that are showing up. Matter of fact, um, this tool, uh, Ever Webinar, will simulate, hey, I want Hispanic names. I want um, the names of only women. Um, you know, I mean, it, they, they will simulate what appears to be a very real uh, webinar, but it's all evergreen. So it's, it's always running and, you, you know, you don't have to be there for that. Um, you can also run those so that they run automatically and then you're available to answer questions so that you're, you know, instead of you having to like run the event and then answer questions and try not to look like you're doing 600 things at one time, you can have the video run. 
and then you're answering questions behind the scenes manually. So it, it can be done a bunch of different ways. The tools for this are, are actually very sophisticated. Um, now, one thing that, um, you know, I, I mentioned joint ventures and then um, an interview that promotes you. So a lot of people think that um, the only way to do a joint venture is to, you know, be some rock star with, you know, people with like these monster lists and then somehow, you know, pray to them. And it's kind of like, oh, my God, this guy's going to actually, uh, you know, mail for me. You'd be surprised how many people have, you know, modest lists, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand people, maybe it's only two, three hundred, but they are matched, you know, perfectly to what it is that you're selling, you know? So it's the guy who has a list of people who bought cars in, um, you know, 2016 and it's 2018 and I'm selling tires. So those people may need tires now, or, you know, uh, I'm a dog breeder and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm mailing to the guy who sells all the dog food. So, you know, very synergistic sort of setups like that. Um, if you can get someone like that to mail on your behalf, what is it that you're getting from a JV? You're getting that credibility. I don't know who Elizabeth is. I don't know who Chris is. But this other person is saying that that person is really good at this thing. And so that buys you the credibility or the need to have to, you know, put them on a webinar or, or to, to build that credibility step because you're getting that credibility by having someone refer you. Now, in order to do that, it really does have to be authentic. Um, I mean, I've seen people do it. Um, you know, where it's kind of like quasi, you know, it's like, do they really know each other? This guy's just mailing on his behalf. So there's different ways of doing it. But if you can get someone to mail on your behalf and, you know, the, the incentives there, some people want to do it because the content's good. Um, I mean, for me, I'll, if, if someone wants me to promote their stuff and put them on my uh, video blog, I get free content. A lot of times, you know, they'll say, hey, do you want... Um, a commission off of the sales and I'll go, I, I, it'll be nice. I'll have you on my program either way. Cause I just want the content. Other people want the commission. It really depends on the incentives. Elizabeth, what do you have? For you? Uh, just yesterday that happened. Somebody emailed me who knows me very well for like, you know, 30 years and said, we want to promote you on our site to teach journaling, blah, blah, blah. So my question is, I think that would be a really good option for me. Um, my question is, and uh, maybe a little off off topic here, but what kind of percentage does JV partnerships give? Do they give 20, 30, 50, like what is the percentages or the, the scale of percentage? It, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If they've called you, they may not even want to cut. They just want Elizabeth. Oh, uh, In some cases, I've seen people budget 50% of the first months, 50% of the first years. Um, like I've seen people sell products for $2,000 and $1,000 goes to the affiliate because what they want is the volume of sales. They want volumes of incented JVs mailing on their behalf. This, is on, this is on a bigger scale. You know, people who are, who are wanting to really mail out thousands and thousands with a really coordinated launch. Mm -hmm. um, in a case like yours, they're just, hey, we just want you and then um, yeah. they, they've already heard you, you know, you've been interviewed on the program. It's kind of like, by the way, if you want more information, I do have this online program. If you're interested, here's the link. And the okay. other people, you know, you just got to talk to them about what it is that they want. But um, if they're inviting you to a program, a lot of times. Yeah, they said they want to give me free advertising and they asked if I wanted to teach journaling for a certain X amount of dollars. Oh, there you go. I mean, those are the kind of, when I mentioned assets at the very beginning of, you know, like in week one and week two, that's what I meant. Who do you have access to that can help you promote your idea? Thank you. Yeah. So it, it isn't an unrelated question. It's right on. So um, when I started doing this, I did have one client who, um, not one client, but actually I thought he was a client, but he contacted me and he said, hey, I've got a program. I'd like to interview you. And as a matter of fact, he wanted to be set up as an affiliate. Uh, and that was kind of his incentive. He interviewed me. I got a nice recording out of it. I got a free blog post out of it. Um, and I go, hey, if you want 50%, I'm good with that. 
because at, at that point, what I wanted was just exposure and visibility. Yes. Uh, you know, affiliates, because I'm, I'm, I have been thinking in the last few days that would be also a really good way for me to go. Is that something that technically you and your team can also know about in terms of putting that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. We, we build a lot of those. I tell you, in some cases, all you need is something that's very, something that works. Right. Um, like, okay. for example, let's, let's say that, um, I mean, let's say that you're going for, you know, I'm just picking number 20 sales and you'd be thrilled with 20 sales. Um, you could come up and give that person a link and no matter any sale that comes from that link has to be that person's. Right. You know, and that's about as sophisticated yet because you don't have 10 or 20 different affiliates and you have to worry about whose it was. Right. But it, if you start getting 10 or 20, then you're going to have to figure a system out. Yeah, in which case, there are plenty of tools for doing that. I mean, Infusions, right. Active Campaign, you know, there's a lot of tools that make it pretty easy to, to say, this person is the one that got them in here. And then it enforces, is the first person that referred them, does the first person that referred them get the commission? Does the last person to refer them get the commissions? You know, do they split commissions? You know, whatever. There's different ways of doing it. Does it just do JV ever work like like the first year you might get X amount and then it drops, you know, and drops and that kind of thing? Yeah, you might give them an exclusivity. Hey, your your link is only good for 90 days. Right. And after that, that client's a free agent. All right. Thank you. So those are all the those are all the you know the different options that, that are available for that. So okay. okay. So um that's it. So that is that is it. Um, so there, you know, again, there's a lot of different ways to market things like this. There are a lot of different ways to uh, get attention and it all is very um, specific to, you know, your asset, your reputation, how you currently sell um, and who knows you. So, um, you know, there's, there's a million right answers. You've got to find the formula that makes the most sense based on, you know, what you do today and how how this becomes another expansion to what you currently do. So um, I, will, I will be telling you that um, this week, uh, I've got my team set up to get you all the sites done. And I, I'm targeting to get everything done by Friday so that the course actually really finishes on time. Um, so FYI, Elizabeth. Can we still use the Facebook page to ask questions or solicit feedback or you know, get feedback from other members in the class? No, it's one o'clock. I'm closing it now. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth, we'll, we'll keep it open. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, I've got to decide what I do. It may become a bigger group. I haven't decided how I'm going to use that group going forward. All right. Yeah, Rose, could I maybe uh, offer um, um, an opinion on that? Because I've been following a lot of groups over the last um, six, nine months. I'm a member of several. Sure. Um, I think Facebook groups like this are quite valuable as an ongoing thing because you can add members to them and increase the engagement within your target audience. So um, I think to, to leave it as an ongoing thing would be a benefit, not just to the current members and the early members, but also for the future members. And certainly part of my business model is going to be using <coughs> a combination of um, membership within the social membership within the site and also Facebook uh, and if I can get my existing members talking on Facebook to my prospect to get them into the site that'll help doing the selling for me so there's a, there's a very good reason for leaving the group open and inviting prospects into it and get them to go to sign up to do your deep trip yeah the, the, the reason I'm not sure how I'm going to do this is because for example, this is this is a group that is exclusive, so that you get access to me. So if I if if the next if the, if this course becomes evergreen and it's not done with you, then it, it works perfectly for that because I can say, look, it's it's a, a do it yourself, but you can ask me questions, and then there's this community of people in there. What I'm thinking of doing though is creating another group that's like the one that you're describing. And that's mm -hmm. more of where we talk about membership site building in general and maybe not specific to the breakthrough approach, although we come from this area, so you know that's kind of implied. 
So, uh, you know, do I call that the breakthrough course? What I mean, I, th that's the reason I don't know. But this one will continue to be open, and I'm not going to be kicking you guys out of it. Yeah, well, one group I'm a member of is, uh, it was an author's online course. Uh, they had um, the general course for everybody who expressed an interest, and then a, uh, a closed group for those who actually bought the product. Right, so right. Two, two different, and you automatically got, as soon as you bought the product, you automatically got on to the, the inner circle, if you like. Yeah, so and, that's, it, that's and, and by the way, I, I've seen people name them and brand them so similarly that the transition from the free to the paid wasn't blatantly obvious. Because, you know, when you're interacting with, uh, with Facebook, it's kind of like, oh, I got another breakthrough message. And so the participation is there. But if, you know, the, the paid one has to be private, otherwise people are going, well, then it's really not that worth it. Um, but if you make them so similar, the graduation is pretty natural. Um, and then eventually people are in both of them and they almost can't tell the difference because if you're a paid person and you see a message from the free one, it's probably going to be in a related topic or it's similar to what you were doing before you entered the course, which was helping other people. So yeah, point mm -hmm. well taken. Yeah. Um, Sue. I have a couple of questions. Um, let's see, I'm not new to that. Okay. Um, one, regarding what you're just saying about the Facebook group, um, does it learn Dash? have a forum capability i think it does it has a what forum it, it doesn't built into it the social learner for learn dash does it's a combination learn dash along with bb press and a whole bunch of other things that work together to build that facebookish sort of feature where people can talk to each other uh people can actually like post in a news feed and uh, that's a plugin it's just a plugin uh, read up Social Learner for Learn Dash. It's, it's by BB Press. Uh, it's actually by Buddy Press. The names are kind of all a little confusing. But it's the BB Press forum with a theme, and I think it's like six different plugins and Learn Dash <coughs> together orchestrate that. We, we were actually building one of those as we speak. Um, but it's, uh, it's a way to build that community without having to, to use Facebook. And that would be going through the learn dash part of it not through memberium is that correct this is memberium. No, memberium is part of the formula it doesn't have to be but um you know you have social learners the theme then you have learn dash to do what learn dash does which is like an lms and then you have bb press providing the forum and then there's plugins that provide communication and messaging among the members and where does the memberium part fit in is it, it's all controlled the access is all controlled through infusionsoft so it's the who gets what part it's, of it. it's the protector and the access control. Okay. Um, secondly, when, well, on your part, when is this course considered finished as far as the, um, what the sites would be looking like, just that they're set up with the uh, softwares in them? Yeah, when, when the, the course will be installed and then I've got to perfect all the documentation my team and I are going to kind of help you guys through that. Um, so it's up to, on our plate to put the content in? Yes. Not to hand the content to you and you guys put it in? But by the way, we have virtual assistant services and we'd be more than happy to help you. <laughs> hey, it's a segue. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth. Um, you know, so you said something that was really valuable to me today and I want to ask you about it. You were talking about don't or maybe Chris said, or somebody said, don't promise too much. Because <laughs> if anything, I have like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my sales page that I sent you, don't even read it, I'm, I'm redoing it. Because there's like so many do you want to's that could be for, you know, it could be slanted towards the journal, the writing, the creativity, you know, healing grief. So all different courses that I plan on teaching. So I wanted to know, I'm trying to like scale that sales page back. Um, like you had like, I think on your scales page, you had maybe three do you want to's. I mean, is that sort of a rule of thumb? Or? You, you need to keep it to three. And, and right. if not, you're probably trying to sell multiple courses. Well, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. And that's what it, I'm trying it, to sell. By the way, it could be that you sell one course three different ways. Uh, I've done that all my life, yeah. Because right. keep in mind, you, you know, you sell to people's wants, you deliver on their need. So I may be wanting, 
you know, peace of mind and you're, you're selling me, you know, what I need, which is you need to journal more. Uh, but it could be that I, you know, I need to increase sales and get focused and the tool is journaling. Yeah. And I'm seeing that everything I've written here, I can piecemeal and put into the course on creativity or the course on healing grief or, you know, all of that. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't try to over. Yeah. If you're having a hard time with your sales page, it's because you're trying to do too much with yeah. one sales page. Well, that's what I'm seeing. Thank you. Yes. It would maybe you already have, but it would be helpful to have a checklist or a rubric or something to um, a, a rubric. Say, Only a computer science major would say that. A rubric. Thank you. And I'm a computer science major, and she knows that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know what a rubric is. She, her, her and I something know. You gauge, it's, it's a measure. Yeah, measure when something is complete or not, and yeah. how's it going to be judged on. Um, so just to gauge what is to be accomplished in this course and whose plate it's on and just, you know, step by step, like, you know, yep. inserting learn dash. Yep. You are I'm doing it. I, I've come up with that initial to-do list, which is kind of yeah. like some, some rough instructions on how to use it. And that was what I did in week five. Is what? that a handout in week five? So it says maybe okay, yeah. it, it's, on, it's one of the resources on that page and that helps. But, but I really want to make that complete. And I mean, just to give you a, a look out of where I think I'm headed is this course without the without the building of the course is probably going to become it's probably going to become two things so i'll teach you how to get to here and then oh by the way if you want the course here it is and that'll be like an upsell or a separate feature or option that's kind of what my thinking is um, but i mean i think it would help with you know scope creep or something at the end of this course if people say but wait but wait um, you know, to have a rubric and have be able to have things to check off on your side and on our side yeah. to have a better determination of when the course is done on both of our parts without scope creep. Yeah, I, I yeah. from from a beta perspective of this course, this is the part that's actually been the the one that's kind of been the most work, and I, I knew that from the beginning. Uh, but now I'm actually I ha I have had a lot of people ask me for the course, like another partner coming up and saying, hey, George, do you have like an entry-level course? And it's like, you know, as a matter of fact, we do. Um, and so that is a standalone solution. I can have my team install it in someone's environment. I mean, the first time it'll take a little bit more, but once we kind of get the, the process down, you know, it'll be maybe an hour, hour and a half process. And here's the instructions, knock yourself out or hire us to finish it. But I can... So, because right now I have a little confusion in my mind, which isn't a good thing, so other people probably do, as to um, what you know, designates the completion of the course as far as the membership site. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I'll, I'll make sure to get that. Cool. Anything else, folks? I've really enjoyed the course. I mean, it's been very helpful to me, and um, you, know, you knew how much... Um, reticence I had coming in. I'm actually still doing interviews and finding them um, valuable in terms of everybody's, uh, you know, the beta. I, I tell you what, I would stop doing the interviews. You probably have more than enough information to work with, unless what you're trying to do is find more customers, in which case I think it's a great exercise. I am trying to find more customers. And I also want to, I've got some people on the other side of the pond in England who don't know me at all, who are, who value things higher. So I want to speak with them. So, well, here, yeah. here's, here's, another side of the, here's another side of the pond or there to my left or right, depending on how you see it. <laughs> right. Thank so. you. Um, Yo, Elizabeth, uh, I'm the other side of the pond. So if uh, I can give you some help, give me a shout. I will, Chris. I'll, I'll get you on Facebook and also in the group. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just a um, bit, I suppose, to put in the course how people do things differently as far as the survey and the call, getting people on the phone stuff is concerned. I did my survey and I got 19 feedbacks. I didn't have a phone call. I did all the survey monkey and sent it to my list. Um, I, I want to talk to you about that. I want to see how effective that was. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's an option. Um, I, let's, let's set up a time to talk. I want to see what your results look like. Okay. Steven, it's been a pleasure. I know we'll be talking some more.
George, thank you so much for everything. I know I, I, I owe you a test, a very good testimonial, and you'll get that for me by the end of the week. Cool. Very good, everybody. Well, hey, you guys know how to find me. I'm not going to disappear from Facebook, and my phone is always open for you guys. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you later in the week. Take care. I hope you found it valuable. Bye. Okay. Bye.